We can do better than that. It feels just like heaven in this room. And where God is, that's where I want to be. The scripture this morning is coming from Matthew, the first chapter, the 18th to 21st verse. All right. And this is how it reads. Hold on one second. I got too much stuff in my hands. Thank you for standing. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Only one immaculate birth. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And this will be continued next week. Let us pray. All righteous and gracious God, we come to you this day thankful for everything that you have provided for us. Thank you for this morning's early rising. Thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you for the cool air that we can feel on our skin to know that we are in the land of the living. Thank you for loving us so very much that you prepared a small baby so many years ago and you sent him here just to take away the sins of the world. He didn't come for us to decorate a Christmas tree. He didn't come for us to fix up boxes with gold tinsel. He came to save us from Satan's power. And we thank you. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. And God, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for making ways out of no way. Thank you for healing us when we've been sick. Thank you for being a friend that's just closer than a brother. Lord, we have been depressed and down and downtrodden. You came through and you have been the lifter of our heads. Lord, when we've been hungry, you have fed us. When we were naked, you clothed us. When we were outdoors, you brought us in. Father God, you have been the wind beneath our wings. And Lord, you have been the light unto our pathway. We thank you for everything that you have provided for us. And Father God, we are so concerned about what's going on in our in our community, in our neighborhoods, in our country. But Lord, we realize you are still in control and there is nothing that goes on without your permission. So Lord, we don't know what the answer is going to be. We know you have the answer. We pray now that you would be with this church service in a miraculous way. Help us to stomp our feet, clap our hands, say hallelujah, praise you because you are worthy of all the praise. Lord, we've tried to praise other things. We've tried to praise our cars, our homes, our families, our children, and all that failed. Nothing fa- nothing else works but you. Anything else, is, we make a mess of it. So we don't put anything before you right now. We're going to praise you. We're going to lift you up where you belong. And we ask that the live streaming community would join in with us, wherever you are. If you're in your kitchen or your living room, you may be in your bedroom. Help us to praise Jesus because he is the reason for the season. And not only this season, but for every season, he's the reason. And Lord, we know that Christmas is a precursor to Easter. He came as a baby to become a man to take Calvary. So we must not forget that they are in conjunction with each other. I pray for every family that's here this morning. I pray that you are blessed in miraculous ways. Remember our sick and our shut-ins. We pray also for Reverend Ali, little son. We pray that you would bring him forward, Father God. I pray that you would just bless us because we stand in for blessing. We get caught up in things that don't matter. We get uh, worried about things that's not concerned. We're concerned what people think about us. It does not matter. It only matters what you think about us and how you will continue to guide us. We ask for all these blessings to be in the name of Christ, who is our Savior. Amen.
Christmas holiday worship times, okay? On Christmas morning, we will start at 10 a.m. There will be no discovery hour. Um, and then we'll be selling watch night at uh, Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church. That's at 10.30 p.m. on December 31st. Then New Year's Day, we will also have morning worship, and it will start at the regular time at 11 a.m. There will be no discovery hour. On Friday, December the 23rd, here at New Covenant, we will be doing the memorial service for Mia Monroe. Amen. The doors of the church will be open at 11 for family and friends to gather and, and fellowship with one another, and the memorial service will start at 12 noon. Amen. Amen. Don't forget the second uh, sat, uh, Sunday in January, which is January the 8th, we We'll be starting our Master Life series. If you haven't got your book, you can check with Ruby Gibson or go on Amazon and purchase yours. Amen. Also, don't forget on every Saturday morning at 9 a.m., Reverend West and Reverend Diamond, they have a family prayer time. Amen. 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 Make it a point to join every Saturday morning. You can do that through the New Covenant Facebook page. Amen. Yesterday, we had a bike drive here um, thanks to Dream Center Academy and New Day Ministries. Yeah. Brother Todd reached out to the churches in our community and uh, blessed children from different congregations. There is word that there will be another one coming soon. I'll let you know about that. It will probably be by Facebook. And then also yesterday, I understand they had a wonderful time at the Christmas play. And Molly wanted me to let you know that she's starting already for the Easter play. She needs stage hands, she needs the actors, she needs it all. So if you are interested in being in the Easter play, please see either Molly Codwell or uh, Latasha Ford. Amen. Then just continue to play, pray for our sick and shut-in. That's Mary Jackson, Johnny Buford, Nikki Brown and her baby boy, and Hazel Broder. Continue to pray for our bereaved families, the Monroe family, all the families that were affected in the fire um, during that time, as well as our understanding there was another fire just the other night impacting families. We just need a lot of prayer going on in our community for a whole lot of reasons, so just continue to do so. And that concludes all of my announcements for today. Thank you. Amen. Let's give Miss Deb a hand. We thank her. Amen. 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 If you were not at the play last night, you did miss a treat. Amen. Amen. The play was out of sight last night. Amen. Amen. I want to ask all everybody that has something to do with the play, whether you was in the play or cleaned up at the play or whatever you did. Please stand. Amen. Please stand. Amen. 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 We thank God for you guys. You did a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. Amen. Amen. I, I call myself coming just to, to show my face and get out of here, and that didn't work out that way. I got off from work, went home, and shot right down here. We got here just in time. And it was really, really good. I'll take my hat off to you. I think we, we can do better than that little. So it was out of sight. Amen. I asked Tasha last night about Christmas next year. She said she got me, so we're going to do another. Amen. Amen. And we got Easter coming on as well. 
I, I desire your prayers for uh, the Monroe family, as Miss Deborah said. You know, uh, Mia was an integral part of New Covenant Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. I remember my wife were talking. I remember first coming over here, Mia was a little girl. She was 11 years old, and she uh, left us at 18. So we watched Mia, Mia grow. And I believe God has something in store for me. Amen. Amen. He, he, he only takes the, the best, they say. Amen. So we're going to trust God in what happened in that matter. And know that Mia is all right now. Amen. Amen. So we are looking forward to having a homegoing celebration for Mia. That will be on the 30th, I believe, of, of, of December. Amen. That Friday before before New Year's, so we're going to need New Covenant to come out. We want to show this family that we support them and show this family that we are here for them, and if we can get together, I've been meaning to get with Reverend Lyons to get our youth choir, amen, because Mia sung in the youth choir. We need our youth choir to, he ain't hearing me, but I hope he's listening. We need our youth choir to get together for this celebration for Mia. I, I remember, I think it was the Easter play, the last play, one of the last plays that we had at the church, and the girls were doing a, a liturgical dance thing, and, and Mia, you know, Mia couldn't move as, as gracefully and swiftly as the other kids, but Mia stood up right over here, and, and every move that those girls made, Mia made it. When they, when they twirled, Mia twirl. She just didn't do it like they did it, but she probably knew that routine even better than they did. And I was amazed. I was like, she probably was like, just let me get out. Y'all ain't gonna let me get out. I'm gonna get up here myself. And she got up her and she did her. She did the doggone thing. Amen. So let, let's come out and show this family that we love them and let them know that, amen, Mia's all right. As they hurt, we as a church hurt as well. Because again, she was an integral part of New Covenant Baptist Church life. And, and we miss her, her mom and her dad as well. Amen. Brother Warren and Miss Cheryl, we miss them as well. I, I remember when I first became pastor of New Covenant and I used to ride by every day. And I was riding past one day, Brother Sizemore, and it was a man out there doing something around the back of the building. I'm like, what's he doing in my church? <laughs> Messing with my stuff. So, you know, Marvin, I pulled back there to see what was up with it. And I pulled up. I said, excuse me, may I help you? He's like, man, I'm just trying to fix this. He said, you the new pastor here. I said, yes, sir, I am. It was Warren. Warren was the type of guy that you didn't have to ask him to do anything. When he seen something need to be done, he, he done it. And that's what he was doing that day. I caught myself trying to check him, and he, he checked me. <laughs> Amen. And Miss Cheryl, the same way. Amen. So they're all together again now, they're resting and relaxing in the arms of our Savior. Amen. So let's keep them lifted up. Let's keep them lifted up in prayer, knowing that God is able. Amen. Some of us, we've been in that spot, so we know what God can do. He's done it before, and he'll do it again. Amen. So I'm a, that's about all I got. I'm going to get on out of the way. Thank you for a great weekend off last weekend. Amen. But we're glad to be back in the house today. Man, I thank Brother, Brother Adams in my absence for preaching a good word last night. Amen. Amen. He's not here today. I think he's taking him some time off. He just got his semester over with, got all those papers written and all of that. So he's taking a little time off as well. So let's keep him and his family lifted up too. Amen. 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 So I'm going to get out of the way and we're going to have our, uh, if I want to welcome our visitors. Amen. We got a couple amen. visitors in the house. You don't have to stand, but I want you to know that we're glad that you're here. We're, we're thankful for you. Amen. Let's give them a hand. We have my, my great friend, Brother Sizemore, the pastor of Von Spiegel Baptist Church with us today. I told him if I knew he was coming, I'd have let him preach. I'd have sit out another Sunday. Amen. Amen. We're glad to have you have you guys with us. Amen. We are glad he always looks out for your pastor. Amen. Things were going on when the pandemic was, was heavy on us. and 
people was calling and wanting to do this and wanting to do that. And Reverend Sazmore opened up his doors. Okay. Amen. I'm, I'm grateful, man. I want you to think that goes unnoticed because a lot of people didn't. Amen. Amen, Amen. Lights. Amen. And I am thankful that you did. I appreciate you, man. And whenever I call him, he always does that. Amen. 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 Let's give Reverend Sazmore and the Von Spiegel Church. Amen. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. I ain't going to call you out, Marvin, but my friend Marvin's here today. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to get out of the way. This choir is going to bless us in song one more time, and we'll come back with the word. Oh, it's offering time. Amen. See, I get mine online, so I'll, 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 I'll be forgetting. It's offering time. Amen. 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 This is the time for us just to give back a portion of what God has given unto us. Amen. Amen. It's the time that we, God has blessed all of us, all of us. We're standing in the need at one time, but God seemed fit to make it work out for us. We might not have all that we want, but we do have what we need. Amen. Amen. I know I don't have all that I want, but Lord, it's been a mighty good day. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. All. I think Brother Don needs some help down here, so we can give Brother Don some help down here. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Charles. Did we take up an offering for the Monroe family last week? We did that last week. Okay, all right, all right. I'm going to take up another one. I wasn't here. I ain't got no money. Baby, give me $20. <laughs> I ain't playing. <laughs> I left my money at home this morning. Yeah, you got it? Charles, do me a favor. We got an extra basket. Let's put it in front of the table right here if we got an extra one. We're going to take up a little something for the Monroe, Monroe family. Amen. 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 Back when you get something, you can always get something else from them. All right. Amen. Amen. Won't he do it? Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for all your care for us, for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. We thank you, Father, for not letting our bed be our cooling board last night. For, Father, you woke us up this morning and started us on our way and gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. Now, Father, as we prepare to give, we pray, Father, you will still inside of us a spirit of giving, helping us to understand how more blessed it is to give than to receive. For, Father, we know that you can take all the little bits that we have and put it into something and, and shake it up and press it down and have it running over, Father, for the glory of your kingdom. God, we love you with all we have. I ask you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Won't he do it, y'all?
Praise the Lord, everybody. Aren't you excited about being in the house of the Lord?
Is anybody going to tell it? We definitely have a story to tell. That Jesus Christ was born. I'm excited that he born, that he was born. I'm excited even more that he walked this earth for 33 years. Healing the sick, and making the lame to walk and the deaf to hear. I'm even more excited that he died. Somebody said he died on a Friday. And on that third and appointed morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his hands. I'm even more excited that after he got up, he went up. But what excites me again is that one of these old days, just like he went away, he's coming back. As much as we see going on in our world today, I can hear my mama say it ain't going to be long. For he will be coming back. Amen. Amen. Let's give this choir a hand. Amen. Reverend Little, Miss Lucy, great job. And Lily, where you going, girl? I seen you up with that mic in your hand today. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a hand. We are thankful. Amen. For we know music can soothe the savage beast. But music also paves the way for the word of God. Amen. Amen. I missed y'all last Sunday. But now we are back. Amen. Refreshed and ready to go. I got a couple of passages of scripture I want you to look at this morning. I want to look at Isaiah, the ninth chapter and the sixth verse. I also want to go to the New Testament, to the epistle, the, the, the book, the gospel, I'm sorry, of Matthew, the first chapter verse number 21 through 25. I'm sitting back in my office this morning. Where's Miss Patricia? She, she must be outside. Uh, so Miss Patricia came in office this morning troubled. She said that uh, there was a shooting in her apartment building. Man, and uh, two men lost their lives today just this morning we start thanking God for what he's done in the past I'm thanking him for what he's done today amen we want to ask God's blessing over that family and Miss Patricia as well that was our neighbor we want to keep her lifted up as, as well we never know what trouble is going to come our way. You never know what's going to happen. You never know how things are going to turn out from one minute to the next. But one thing we have to keep constant in our lives and know that we have God in our lives. Through the good times as well as the bad. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 9, 6. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Then we go over to Matthew, that first chapter in Matthew, verse number 21 says, and she will bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did 
as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. I just want to draw your attention to this title just for a second. That name. That name. That name. That right there. That. That. That name. What's what's in a name? What is a name? Why do we have names? You know, names over the last few decades or so have surely changed. Since I was given the name Robert, names have definitely changed. I heard all kinds of names that really make me wonder what the mother or the father was thinking or or what they were on at the time they gave that child that name. What a name is, a name is a title by which one person is designated from another. And some of these names I heard today, they really designate one from another. I, I, I mean, you can tell if the father's name was Ray, even if it's a girl. You can tell if the father's name was Kevin or the mama's name was Terry. A, a, a name is a way for us to tell people, places, and things apart from others. In Old Testament times, a name stood for one's rep, one person's reputation, person's fame, or that person's glory. Parents would give children names that describe what their hopes and future expectations were for that child. When you look at biblical names, they often revealed a lot about the personality of that person. For instance, the name David means beloved. Abraham means father of multitude. Jake, Jacob's name means trickster. Barnabas' name means encourager. You look at the name Eve, it means giver of life. But today I want to preach about that name. That name that we all know. I, I, I want to look at the name of the one mentioned in Matthew 1 and 21. Amen. There's got to be something special about this name, this name Jesus. After all, it was a name given to him by God. Yeah. Verse 21 says that she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus. Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Yes. Philippians, the second chapter, verse 9 and 11, when, when that name is mentioned, men should bow before him and confess yes. him as Lord. That name is a special name. First thing I want to look at is that name reveals Jesus' personality. Call his name Jesus because he's going to save them from their people. Some people call him Emmanuel, meaning God with us. But see, Jesus, he was different, y'all. He wasn't just the average child. But he was God wrapped up in human flesh. It was once said that when God saw the condition of the world, that he had to send somebody to save it from itself. And it had to be somebody that was free from sin. See, Moses couldn't go because Moses disobeyed God. David couldn't go because he sinned with Bathsheba and then had a husband killed on top of that. Noah couldn't go because he got drunk and his son saw him naked and, and then he cursed Ham's son Canaan. Abraham probably could have went but he couldn't go because he lied twice about Sarah being his wife. So God said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to wrap myself in human flesh and I'm going to go myself. Jesus was God wrapped up, is God wrapped up in human flesh. See, that's why he didn't have a normal birth. But he had a virgin birth that produced a child without a sin nature. Why would God enter into a world full of sin? He, he, he came to fight a battle that humanity could never wage or even nor less win. He came for all of us. He came to do yes. battle with Satan yes, sir. and do battle against sin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
That name Jesus it reveals his personality. Yeah. And, and then that name Jesus it reveals his purpose. Yeah. All right. Jesus. Yeah. Jehovah is salvation. Yeah. So see the name Jesus reveals a God with a purpose to save sinners. Uh -huh. The Bible says that Jesus came in not into the world to condemn the lost but he came to save the lost. Yeah. Yeah. You don't believe me John 3.16 said for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but. There's always a but in there. Have everlasting life. This wasn't something new with God. This, this was his purpose from the very beginning of time. Uh, first Peter tells us, and first Peter tells us how the message Bible I'm reading says, Your life is a journey. You must travel with the deep consciousness of God. It cost God plenty to get you out of that dead-ended, empty-headed life you grew up in. He, he paid it with Christ's sacred blood. He, he died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. And, and this was no afterthought. Even though, it was, even though it has only lately at the end of ages become public knowledge. God always knew he was going to do what he done for you. It's because of this sacrificed Messiah whom God had then raised from the dead and glorified that you trust God that you know you have a future in God. No it ain't over. As long as I got God everything's going to be alright. We just sang a song as I got Jesus and that's enough. I don't need nobody else as long as I got Jesus on my side. Everything is going to work out for my good. I'm not saying I'm not going to have some hard times. I'm not saying everything's going to go my way. But the ultimate end is that I'm going to be all right. The plan that God had was conceived in eternity and consummated in time. This name, that name, that name, Jesus also reminds us that he came into this world to, to die for our sins. The only way the sin problem could have been dealt with. It's through the shedding of blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That great black apostle Paul put it like this. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life which I now live is in the, in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. And not only did he love me, he gave his self for me. Jesus came that he might die on the cross to set us free from sin. That, that name is something special. That, that name Jesus, it reveals his personality. And it reveals his purpose. He came to die for my sin. I don't know about you, but he died for mine. So when, the, when time comes, I stand before the, the, the righteous judge. When I stand right there, I'm going to have an advocate by my side. When the prosecutor begins to bring up everything that I've done, all the badness that I've done, he, he's going to bring up all the goodness of Jesus. Can I get a witness today? When he brings up all the lies I've told, all the trouble that I caused, I got an advocate that's going to stand up and say, I died for that. He, he, he can't go here, he's got to go there because I gave my life for that. The name reveals purpose personality. And, and then that name reveals power. Yes, yeah. How many of y'all know there's power yeah. in the name Jesus? That name reveals his power. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. Say the sound of his name, the, the Satan trembles. In the sound of his name, everything changes when you say his name. Yeah. Yes. You ever got in trouble and stuff going, and you just utter the name Jesus. Yeah. It seems like the burdens get a little lighter. Our, our, our trouble gets out of my way. Yeah. So I'm to say that Jesus is going to fix it. Yeah. Might not fix it right now, but after a while. Yeah. The name reveals his power. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. The name, that name. Now, note that the word name it's singular, not plural. Look at it. Look at your text. It doesn't say his names. It said his name shall be called. His 
name. Yeah. Jesus displays all these characteristics all at the same time. Right. 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 He, he, at the same time, he's my, my help. At the same time, he, 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 he's my comfort. At the same time, he's my strength. At the same time, he's looking beyond my faults and seeing my needs. And he's everything. At the same time. He's supernatural. Supernatural, that word means he, he's miraculous. Superhuman. Inexplicable. He's secret and he's extraordinary. He's the miracle man. Yeah, Superman, but I got the miracle man. Some folk got Batman, but I got the miracle man. Men cannot comprehend him, but but he can he, he can be believed on the smallest child. Grown men don't even understand, but the smallest child will say, I, I love Jesus. He's wonderful. Mighty. And then he's a he's like a supervisor. And he's qualified for the job. He plans your path. He, he gives you grace. And he works wonders in your life. He, he's sovereign. Sovereign means he's like, he's my hero. Some folks talk about role model. He's my role model. The hero refers to one who is strong, mighty, and invincible. He, he alone is worthy to be my hero for he has defeated all my enemies. And he alone is worthy of my worship. He's a sustainer. He's Father God. He's a source of my strength. He created us through Adam and he recreated us again with Jesus. He's my Father. He's my mighty God. He, he has all power. And, and since we are his children, therefore, when you see therefore, you ought to know what it's there for. Therefore, that makes me his responsibility. He's got to take care of me. He's got to make a way for me. He's got to keep me. He's got to love me. I am his. And he is mine. Now, y'all, he's everlasting. See, there was never a time when he was not. And there will never be a time when he is not. Here's another reason why he's so good. Before we get to tomorrow, he's already been there and paved the way for us. The song right put like he said, I don't know about tomorrow. It might bring me poverty, but one thing I know. I know who holds my hand. I, I know when I walk through the valley of a shadow of death, I know he holds my hand. I know when I can't find my way, when the, the way gets so cloudy, it gets so dark, I don't know. I know. Some folk might not show up. Some folk might not be there for me when I need them. But one person I know promised never to leave me and never to forsake me. He's the great I am. He's eternal. He, he's, he's a self-existent one. And because he lives, I live. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And now I know. Come on, I better leave it alone. Let me get through this little sermon. I know there are some folk in this room on the live stream under the sound of my voice who know that Jesus still has power. Yeah. Is there anybody in this room today listening on the live stream know that there is power in that name? It don't sound like y'all really believe it. The Bible said that the redeemed of the Lord say so. If the Lord done something for you, you ought to make some noise. There's power in that name. I can go all day and tell you what it means to me. 
I don't want to hold you that long. We can be here till tomorrow evening. And I just tell you half, of, not even half of what he is to me. Because when I think about Jesus and all that he's done for me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, my soul says, thank you, Jesus. When I was a kid, it seemed like we was in church all the time. Sunday school, morning service, evening service, BTU, night service, Wednesday service, New Year's Day service, Christmas service, Thanksgiving. Every time I turn around, we be in church. I said, you know, when I get grown, they ain't got to worry about seeing me. Well, I said, when I'm grown, I ain't seeing that church stuff. I used to hear my mama holler, thank you, Jesus. You've been so good to me. Like, mama, that was daddy being good to you. I bought you that purse. She would say, no, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Now, here I am well over mama's age. Now, when I think about Jesus, now when I think about that name something different begins to happen something crazy begins to take place inside of me when I think about Jesus some things begin to shake, rattle and roll when I think about how far he's brought me some stuff begins to change I, I, I just want to call his name and tell you what it means to me I, I, I want to go through the alphabet. And I want to tell you who he is from A to Z. I tell you he's Alpha and Omega. He's the anointed one, the brightness of our Father's glory. Somebody said he's the chief cornerstone. The day spring of Israel. He's the eternal light. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's the gift of God. He's my hope and my hiding place. He, he's immortal. He's the great I am. He is our judge. He is our king of kings. He's the lamb of God. He's a messenger and our master. He's omnipotent, omniscient, and he also omnipresent. He's a perfecter of my faith. He's the quickening in my spirit and the quencher of my darkness. He's the rose of shine. He's a sinless sacrifice. He's a tree of life. He's the unspeakable gift. He's the vine in whom the believer abides. He's the way and the word. Then when I got down to X, I said, what can I put for X? Reverend Sadford, I said, I can't X him out because it's been too good to me. I said, I got to find a word for X. And when I begin to think about Jesus and what he done for me, I say he's exceedingly great to me. He's an exceeding great reward. Then I got to why. I said, boy, it's going to be a hard one. I got to find something to go with why. Because if I don't go through the whole alphabet, like I said that I was, people are going to be saying he don't know what he's doing. But I stopped by to let you know when you give it to God, he'll make a way for you. So when I got to why, I said he did everything just for you. Then when I got to see, I said he's the zeal of my house. He's the zeal of my life. He's the zeal of all that I am. That is why I love him so. Because he's all that and even more. That's why I love that name. The songwriter said, I see the lightning flash, and I heard the thunder roll. He said, I felt sin breakers dash, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of that name. I heard the voice, the voice of Jesus telling me still to fight on. Some of y'all know the song because he promised never to leave me alone. Is there anybody in 
in this place today, is there anybody, you might be laying in the bed, I don't know who you're laying with, that ain't none of my business, but is there anybody, know there's power in that name, there's power in the name of Jesus, if you believe like I believe, if you know what I know, if he done for you, what he done for me, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Everybody, anybody, make some noise. Make some noise. Jesus, he's my rock. Jesus, he's a friend when I'm friendless. A mother to the motherless. A father to the fatherless. Everything that I need. That's what he is. And that name is a name above every name. That name will give you strength when you're weak. That name will give you power. 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 Yes. Yes. That's why I love the Lord. Because he heard my cry and Pity every groan, and long as I live and trouble rise, I'm a hasten, I'm a run quickly to his throne. Ain't he all right, church? Ain't he all right? Say yes! There is a name. That name that I love. I love to hear. I love to sing his praise. It sounds like music. In my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, 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 how I love Jesus. Because he first, first love, love me. That name. Name reveals his his personality. Name reveals reveals his purpose. It reveals his power. Let's get on our feet all over this room. There might be one in this room today. Don't know him to be the one to pardon you of your sin. I believe it was in it was in 1998 young man by the name of Kirk Franklin he penned some words to a song it says some people say I'm crazy but I can't explain the power that I feel when I call your name Kirk said it's like fire shut up in my bones he said I can feel the Holy Ghost moving and it just won't leave me alone James Robinson, we're here today, he would say it's sweeter than honey come on, come on, come on, come on. from the honeycomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard James, I can feel the Holy Ghost moving yeah, yeah. and it won't leave me alone. No, 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 no. <laughs> but at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow. Curse that you ain't got to wait till the fire comes. You can go on and shout and praise him right now. Something about the name Jesus. Sweetest name. I know. Oh, how I love the name. It's the sweetest name. Oh, I got a question today. I ask you today, did you know him? Do you know him? going to sing in a minute, but I want somebody to get to know him today. Do you know him? You know him to be the one to pardon you of your sin. Do you know him? Do you know? Do you, do you want to get to know him better if you already know him? Those of us who he's done so much for, do we still need to thank him? Every morning we wake up, we ought to say, thank you, Lord. 
Thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you for seeing me through the night. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you. Keeping my family. I didn't get a crazy phone call. Thank you. The children are grown and doing what they're supposed to do. Thank you. But the question come today is will you take the step of faith right now? Do you believe that Jesus died? On the third and the point of the morning, got up from the grave with all power in his hand. Do you believe this? Do you believe that he is able to make your crooked ways straight? Do you believe he's able to, to fix what may be wrong in your life? Do you thank him? Do you believe this? Will you take that step of faith today? Will you come to Jesus right now? He's here today for you. He came today for you. So why don't you just come to him today? Give it to him. Give him all your troubles. Give him all your worries. Give him, give him everything that's wrong. Give it to him. Don't carry it. Don't carry that weight. You don't have to carry that weight. He'll be your burden bearer. He'll, he'll give you hope for tomorrow. He, he will give you. But then he said, come unto me, you, who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. If you're here today, now's the time to get to know him. Get to know something about that, that name. Same question.
significance of that name. I hope we understand that that name holds all power. That name cares for us, looks out for us, and makes so that name puts us in a place where we need to be. Stuff can be going crazy. Speak that name. And I'm telling you, he'll show up. He'll show up. He'll make your burdens light. I'll give you hope for tomorrow. That name will make everything work out for your good. Amen. Amen. I, I want y'all to continue to stand. I hate to keep you getting up and down. But we getting ready to go. Let's go home. We want to leave out the door with something fresh on our minds. We don't want to have a business meeting at the end of worship because we want something fresh to stay on our minds. Just think about how that name reveals his personality. Think about how that name reveals his purpose. Think about how that name reveals his power. Power in the name of of Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us. We're thankful, Father, for your son Jesus. Father, we're thankful for you sending him down through 40 plus two generations. For him coming down as the seed of Abraham, coming down through David, coming on into our midst thank you Father for him being there from the beginning of time being here with us right now same God that was in the beginning the same God that is right now now Father as we are about to leave from this place help us to understand Father that when we gather together we are the church gathered but as we walk out these doors we are the church scattered but we're still the church so help us, Father, to govern ourselves accordingly. Help us, Father, to govern ourselves the way that you have taught us, the way you have showed us, the way you have brought us. Help us, Father, to do your most holy and righteous will, whatever may be going on around us. Help us to understand that outside circumstances don't control what's going on on the inside of us. We know it's, it's the holiday season, God, and a lot of things are going on, so much pressure at this time of the year. So, Father, I pray right now that you will be with those who are depressed. Those, Father, who are going through it. Those who are missing their loved ones. Those, Father, who are not in the right place right now. Comfort them. Strengthen them. Give them what they need, Father. We know they can't get it from man. They can't get it from a bottle. They can't get it from a smoke. They can only get it, Father, from you. We know, God, everything else ain't nothing but a temporary fix. But, Father, what you have for us is everlasting. For you are everlasting. Now, Father, as we walk out these doors, go with us. Stand by us. Lead us, guide us, and give us strength. And Father, we will be forever grateful for all the great, wonderful things you have done. Now, God, we love you. We praise your name on high. We ask you for every last one of these things. In that name. Let every heart say amen. Amen and amen. Go in peace. Sin no more.